Hey guys, my name is Minhee Kang, and I'm in the WR-151 Horrors of Hermes class with Professor Morazzini, and I did my topic on the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and its implications of feminism within the society, so let's get started. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was basically a secret society that was devoted to esoteric training. It was very much formatted in a hierarchical structure, which had different levels of knowledge for the members who have reached specific achievements, which were also known as grades within the society. The rituals and lessons that have been taught within the society range from astrology, alchemy, geomancy, kabbalah, tarot, and hermetics. These all were um, these all had the purpose of increasing self-awareness, self-consciousness, spiritual awareness within the individual in regards to magic and magical knowledge. The society has actually implicated a grading system that is based and influenced by the Kabbalah, which is a Hebrew mystical system with descriptions about the knowledge of the universe, about creation, evolution. And within this society, they actually had three different degrees. The first degree represented the magical stage of purification, and the second degree represented the stage of consecration. The third degree um, represented the actual like magical stage of the union between themselves and working with uh, their higher selves too. So they basically align themselves with the higher self and communicate with them. This society um, had a lot of members participate in initiation ceremonies and in these ceremonies they would reenact mystery plays or ritual dramas that very much hold huge significance in western esoteric traditions. So the initiation process actually begins with the student, with the individual, with the members themselves. It begins with their devotion and motivation to travel through this process and communicate with their higher selves. There's much needed awareness actually to fully push their souls into this completion of great work. Before we get started on like the history of the Golden Dawn, it's I think it's very important to emphasize and introduce the Western esoteric as there's huge connections and relationships backed from the Golden Dawn and Western esotericism. So basically, it's the academic work that has implications and focuses outside the main philosophy and theology of life. It can be described as the form of knowledge that is restricted yet emerges from a spiritual center after transcending and prescribing ways and techniques. It focuses on the metaphysical principles and cosmetology, which is specifically magia, astrology, and alchemy. Magia, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry. Magia is the knowledge of the use of occult powers and properties presented in nature. Astrology is the belief about the influence of the stars. And alchemy involves the rituals in giving back to the ideas and principles of matter. So basically, esotericism encompasses a more organic, natural worldview as opposed to the non-spiritual worldly view. During the mid-1800s, Europe, especially in England and France, experienced an expansive growth in the interest of occultism and hermetic traditions. This mostly stemmed from people being dissatisfied with the orthodox religion and the spiritual movement, which served the purpose of being more stimulating as opposed to the religions. So by the 1860s and 1870s, there was also an increased interest in Freemasonry, which basically sums it up um, the teachings of basic morality and also these cipher manuscripts served these great purpose in the history of the golden dawn and it included the rituals and knowledge of the lectures of the golden dawn there are many variations into how westcott was able to obtain these papers but the real story seems to follow kenneth mckenzie um he was a friend of frederick holland who founded the hermanubis temple and he wrote these ritual outlines and after the death of Mackenzie, Westcott was able to obtain these papers. From the 1888 to 1891, the Golden Dawn was a theoretical school, school that performed initiations and taught the basics of Kabbalah, astrology, alchemy, geomancy, and the tarot. And they also had the lesser ban banishing ritual of the pentagram. By the death of by the time of the death of Woodman, Mathers completed the five equals six, which is the first grade of the second order, and he became the primary chief after the creation of 
the functioning second order. Him and his wife Mona created the tomb of Christian Rosenkreutz to create, um, recreate the discovery of his burial chamber as the ritual for the five equals six. The first order seemed to be very theoretical, whereas the second order was very magic theory became practice. That's where they performed a lot of the rituals and stuff like that. Um, McGregor Mathers also created the curriculum and the eight examinations up to the Theoreticus Adeptus Minor. Sorry if I butchered that. But um, eventually in 1892, Dr. Westcott soon became the chief of the Order of England. Unfortunately, some problems arose when this time period approached in regards to the society. As Mathers was very distracted by other pursuits, this led his financier, Annie Horniman, and him to have great disagreements. He eventually expelled her from the order, and Westcott's association to the order became very aware by the authorities, and he eventually resigned, and that created an opportunity for Florence Fair to become the head of the London branch. But unfortunately, this individual named Madame Horos stole copies of the Golden Dawn rituals, and her and her husband created their own personal order. But this order included a lot of fraud, sex, and extortion, and when they got caught up by the authorities, they claimed to be the leaders of the Golden Dawn. And these initial initiation rituals were then printed in the London newspapers. This scandalized the order, and the original order began to fall apart. The three main co-founders of the order in 1888 were three Quabalists, Freemasons and Rosicrucians, who founded the Esoteric Order of the Golden Dawn, the work that was once abandoned by the Theosophical Society. The primary founder was Dr. William Wynne Westcott. He's at the top. He was a Master Mason and a Secretary General of the Societas Rosicruciana in Angelia, or Rosicrucian Society in England. We also have Dr. William Robert Woodman, he's at the bottom left, and he was a leading member of the Societas Rosicruciana in Angelia, and he was also an excellent quabalist. At the bottom right, we have Samuel Lindell McGregor Mathers, and he was a ritualist, and he basically made the order magical and initiatory. These three individuals intended for the order to keep its Western esoteric tradition intact whilst teaching and preparing individuals through initiations. This individual, Alphonse Louis Constant, also known as Eliphas Levi, he wrote The Dogma and Ritual of High Magic, which is considered a foundational source for Western magic traditions. He also directed the attention to the correlation between the Kabbalah and Tarot, which is an important theory that remains a part of the Golden Dawn teachings. The next few individuals that I'm going to be talking about serve a very important role in what we have as the Hermetic Society today. So Madame Helena Petrova Blavatsky and Colonel Henry Oldcott created an organization called the Theosophical Society by Kabbalists, Freemasons, Rosicrucians, and Spiritualists. They converted to Buddhism and shifted the focus of the Theosophical Society into a more Eastern orientation. The Golden Dawn might have not have developed if they had not changed the focus. With her spiritual partner, Edward Maitland, Anna Kingsford served an important role in influencing the creation of the Golden Dawn. She revived the ideas of esoteric Christianity. They both became integrated into the Theosophical Society in the 1880s, becoming leaders in the London Theosophical Lodge by 1884. But due to their strong Western beliefs, they resigned as a result of finding their beliefs not aligning with the Eastern focus of the society. In 1885, they created the Hermetic Society and attracted individuals like Samuel Lindell McGregor Matthews and Dr. William Wynne Westcott. I couldn't fit the pictures in the last slide, so these are just slides of what they looked like. As mentioned before, the Golden Dawn had great connections back to the Western esotericism, and this can be seen through the methods used to initiate members and the framework of the foundations behind the order. To fully understand this connection, it's important to emphasize the teachings and framework of which the Golden Dawn members advanced through. The Kabbalah was originally a form of Jewish mysticism that contains the secrets of the divine realm. The rituals of the Golden Dawn draws from the Christian Kabbalah and the symbol of the Tree of Life. The symbol of the Tree of Life represents creation through ten spears, and they're all associated with the number, a name of God in Hebrew, an archangel, an order of angels, 
a color and an element and these are connected through 22 paths that have the meaning of connecting the sephiroth of the tree of life and mediate between the qualities of the sephiroth which in which they connect and the final sphere which is called the malkuth is a physical world in a falling state from the world of god or divinity at this time to the left of the slide you can see the progression of the paths reflect the incision symbolism of the degrees of membership of the golden dawn and these three memberships were, for, were referred to as grades or degrees. Each contained a curriculum of study and lectures on esoteric topics. Members were expected to master the occult symbolism, such as through astrology and alchemy, and the Hebrew alphabet, the divine names, the Kabbalistic tree of life, and the 22 paths. The first grade of the first order was called the Adeptus Minor, and the only ritual was a single pentagram ritual um they also it was mostly mainly based on memorization and for the second order it has its studies in visionary activities instead of memorization of the symbolism the portal grade acts as a gateway between the two orders and each grade was associated with one of the sephiroths as mentioned in the previous slide and when the member passes through the portal grade they have passed through the ritual and symbolism of the four grades associated with um these elements so all knowledge is only accessible in a graded manner following the initiation initiation from membership and members are typically blindfolded blindfolded in these rituals in order to ensure that there's no previous knowledge of the content and to also heighten the their disorientation they take oaths to ensure no reveal of the contents of the initiation rituals and this layering effect with has its symbolism and rituals in the rituals accumulate into the final degree. The patterns of ritual follow the symbolism from the Kabbalah, and also a lot of the rituals followed what Freemasonry did in the 17th century. Up until the 1970s, the Golden Dawn was perceived to be a dead magical order. This was also when the new temple of the Golden Dawn rose in Columbus, Georgia, with Israel Regardi's book, The Golden Dawn as a Guiding Notion. With this book, lectures, rituals and knowledge was used to create study groups which led to the individuals within the temple of the golden dawn to initiate themselves after the establishment of the golden dawn temple the group came in contact with order Templi orientis and with motives to further the esoteric studies they decided to join them regardi began his contact with the temple and by june 1982 they were teaching lectures on the kabbalah the history of the order and the pentacle ritual and other topics this began the coverage of magic within the Golden Dawn, the correct, such as the correct way to project energy, how to charge talismans using the projection sign and the sign of silence, and other different methods of healing. Currently, the Hermanic Order of the Golden Dawn is alive and keeps the knowledge of the traditions through the instructions of individuals. The order is based on individual invitation only and has stated no solicit for membership. The curriculum has materialized beyond Israel Regardi, but it's true to the prosecution tradition, spirit, structure, and fundamental view visions of Westcott, Mathers, and Woodman, while still expressing tolerance for all paths of spirituality. It remains in line with their spiritual wisdom of unexpected sources of knowledge. So basically, the order was founded by three masons, but it was open to both male and female, in which some females rose to take positions of higher significance. This broke the centuries of Western occult initiation traditions. In the times of the Victorian era, the role of women were just limited to being a wife and being a mother. Not only were women considered intellectually inferior, but also psychologically as well. Within the order, women were given the opportunity to become priests, write doctrines, and design ceremonies, the ones I mentioned earlier. They were at the foundations of the running of the society from the beginning. They led the women from the status of subordination to power and also the removal of patriarchal systems. The Golden Dawn fostered the rights of women and activists, and women became empowered to write books, give speeches, and campaign for such rights. 